What is up guys, Dashing here and live we are for perhaps one of the most loaded editions of Octane that we have ever seen here in CMV. Evident is that, by the way, we're kicking things off here, an Iron Man match, baby, as the score is finally about to be settled between Joe Blade and Aaron Stone, who have been at each other's throats, guys, for well over a month at this point. And Joe Blade making his much-anticipated return to CMV near the start of this new season, and well, the son that take it upon himself to attack Aaron Stone, reigniting an old rivalry between the two that dates back to the NGW days. Since then, we have seen Blade continuously getting the better of Aaron Stone. Whether it be in that one-on-one -on -one matchup, which Joe Blade won by countout after absolutely beating the bricks off of Aaron Stone. And then we had that mixed tag team matchup a few weeks ago, which ended via a time limit draw. But hopefully here tonight, we get a a definitive victor we'll find out who well and truly is the better man will it be the bona fide movie star joe blade or will it be the protein packed powerhouse aaron stone joe blade's done a very good job i mean not that it takes a whole lot for joe blade to get under your skin <laughs> he's you know, it's just that kind of guy that finds it very easy to irritate people but he has definitely and playing those mind games with Aaron Stone has riled up the milkman. Will that be to his benefit here? Or might it might end up being his downfall. Got a big beefy boy like Aaron Stone pissed off at you. Now he's got you in this Iron Man match. There's going to be 25 minutes in the clock. No count outs. No disqualifications here. It's anything goes. And at the end of the 25 minutes, he never has the most points scored victorious and of course you could score points by pin or submission and this big ass episode of octane of course leading us into the tag team cup tomorrow night my friends we are back in tokyo japan the cup returns do not miss it what a show that is going to be but that's tomorrow tonight how about our main event first time ever in CMV history, a special guest referee match as global champion of Morgan going to be calling the action when Hunter Quinn challenges Tracy James for the Rite of Passage Championship. But right now it's time. Who is going to be the Iron Man? These two hogs once again going to be let loose on each other. There you see the 25 minutes on the clock. Ref rings the bell. We get it out. Right into the pin off that air side. He's trying to score a point lickety split. Just a little over 10 seconds in the matchup, but he ain't going to get that lucky. Turns him inside out with that clothesline. Aaron Stone. Telling Joe Blade a couple weeks ago, you made a mistake. Choosing to come after me, thinking I was going to be some easy target, somebody that you could utilize to 
catapult yourself to the top here on Octane. And that was about to go. Joe Blade now in control. And of course, going to take a couple seconds just to show off the, the muscles, baby. The 18-inch pythons. And again, there's no disqualifications here. No count outs either. And a trash can has been pulled out. Pretty apropos. Joe Blade has called Aaron Stone trash numerous times. Aaron Stone going to grab a stop sign. It's time to stop, Joe Blade. Right over the head. And again, come on, not the money maker. Tries to go for a big old neck breaker. But Blade will be able to avoid it. Win here for one of these gentlemen. Go a long way. Building themselves up in this new season. I talked about it. Come on, let's go. Both these guys, I, I see big things for them this season. Here, Joe Blake going to take the stop sign, just throwing it at the downed Aaron Stone. It's also, oh, uh, that was right on top of the stop sign. Couldn't really see because of the barricade there, but I heard it. And as you can see, falls count anywhere as well. Two count there in this Iron Man match. Joe Blade is currently well in control. Also here tonight, guys, we've got Caroline Swift set to meet rising star champion Quinn Bell one-on-one, -on -one, a non-title bout. Also got <laughs> a vocal fan there in the front row. Nobody likes you. He was directing that towards Joe Blade, which I don't necessarily know that he's wrong. Look at the power, though, by Blade just throwing Aaron Stone around. That stop sign is getting a whole lot of use. A lot of sharp edges, man. Just threw it. Right at the ribs of Stone. Blade is loving this. He's enjoying this. Taking his time. Taking apart Aaron Stone. Let's not forget what Blade did to Stone a few weeks ago, man. Their one-on-one -on -one matchup beat the absolute hell out of Stone. To the point that he couldn't freaking get back up, got counted out. Got the stop sign again. Try to throw it at Stone. Stone able to get out of the way this time, though. Delivers a nasty clothesline. He's like he's just woken up. Big knee with a bust Blade open. And now look at this. Aaron Stone's got Blade caught. Got him by the shoulder. Very, very painful submission maneuver to Blade able to get out of it. Oh, and a big right hand. Blade's pissed. Low blow! No disqualifications. One, two. Th oh, man, that almost got Blade the first fall. 2.999. Blade's pissed. And told Aaron Stone. Last month, you make me bleed, you dare? That's his moneymaker, man. He's a movie star. Can't be all busted up. And look at the atomic drop. Not just once, but twice. Going to take Stone off his feet and Blade powering over him. I said it before. Oh, Sleeper. Sleeper. Very suddenly locked in here. Blade. And then managing to find a way out. And Stone putting his submission skills on display in this Iron Man matchup. Joe Blade might just have the biggest ego in all of CMV today. Maybe only rivaled by Gianna, I can think. Targeting now the left hamstring. Four. Pushing Blade face first. Onto the floor, digging underneath the ring again. This time produces a table, which he's just gonna throw off to the side. All right, not too sure what the point of that was, but hey, I'm not in this matchup, so I don't know what sort of game plan Aaron Stone has coming into this one. A big right punch to the gut, suck the air right up out of you. It is all stone right now. Nobody has scored a fall yet. Just over five minutes. About 20 minutes left on the clock. Another inverted atomic drop. Aaron Stone says no thank you. Elbow to the top of the head, but didn't see that big thrust coming. That electric power. Whoa, trash can. 
Mind of its own there. Steel chair. And Stover can go to get back in the ring. Keeping it simple with that back suplex. Ray gonna try to pop right back up. Stover's there waiting for it. DDT! The milkman strikes, but not gonna go for the pin of mistake if you ask me. But what's he what's he thinking about doing with that steel chair? I'm gonna wedge it in the corner. Ray was completely out of it after that DDT. Aaron Stone trying to drag the big old body of Joe Blade out of the corner. Wasted a lot of time here. Coconut crunch. Blade gonna push him back. Shoots to his feet. Blade. Multiple cuts on his face now. Oh, I dropped him to where the sun don't shine. Right between the legs and a dirty pin. Nothing the ref can do about it. This is completely legal. No disqualification. Gonna kick out by Stone anyhow. Blade using every cheap trick you can think of. The low blow, the dirty pin. Hey. Don't believe you have any rights to do so here. Grabs that trash can. Hucks it. And it's floored Aaron Stone, who looks to be very much out of it. Can Stone counter this sit-up powerbomb? No, and it might be game over here. Joe Blade to score the first fall. One, two, th no! Unbelievable kick out there. Frustrated is Joe Blade. Going back to the trash can. These fans are loving it. Oh! The trash can slicing open. Aaron Stone bleeding now as well. Another very, very close call right there. Oh, Blades going for that steel chair that was wedged in the corner. Look at how sharp those trash cans are. Blades going up to the top. Neck breaker! My God! Ref, hurry up! In the position as quickly as you can, but it took way too long. That may have been a, a point right there for Joe Blade flushed down the toilet. Thanks to the ref not being in position to count the pin. Lucky for Aaron Stone. Blade looking a bit wobbly, man. His blood covers just about his entire face. Now he's got a kendo stick. Stone starting to stir. Seeing that shot with the kendo stick coming. There might be a special delivery. No, reverses with a back body drop. Joe Blade. 21! 21! On the outside of the ring. Drag him. Back into the squared circle, bumping into the trash can. It's our first matchup of the evening, man. The ring inside area. Look at that goddamn war zone. Now a ladder being introduced by Joe Blade. Takes up the tennis with his Aaron Stone Blade gonna run right into it. Head first. Shoots the half, hooks the leg. One, two. Still neither man able to score a point. 15 minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. Oh, the blood from, from Joe Blade. Smearing the ringside area. Hammerlock DDT. One, two! How the hell did Aaron Stone kick out of that? His skull's gotta be all jacked up. Look at this blade pacing back and forth. He doesn't know what to do, man. He's just getting blood everywhere. He's going for the trash can. Maybe he's lost a bit too much blood. He's looking out of it right now. Hucked. Got first into the steel steps. Aaron Stone just giving him a tour of the ringside area. Tries for a senton, but Blade able to get out of the way. Throws out that double axe handle. Didn't do a lot of good. And there's another DDT! Both men are down! Can Stone maneuver himself into position to try for a pin? That took everything out of him, though. Doesn't look like he's quite finished. Throwing Joe Blade hither 
and Yon. Now the pin attempt. A little too late there, though. Stone racking his brain. What the hell does he have to do to... Oh, oh, oh! Tries for the kick to the gut. We're going to set up maybe another... Sit out. Powerbomb and an air raid siren. Crack in the back of Joe Blade. Look at the blood, man. Just leaving a trail as Joe Blade. Not going to be starting any films anytime soon. Power bomb. Hardly anything left, but collapsing into the pin. One, two, three, and Joe Blade is able to score the first fall. One to zero here, but there is still plenty of time for Aaron Stone to tie things up. 13 minutes and 25 seconds remain. With these murderous stops in the back is going to go for another quick pin. Try to take a further lead here in this Iron Man match, but a kick out by the protein pack powerhouse. In the ringside area going to be getting a bit, a bit slippery with the amount of blood. Yeah, I don't know. Both men keep going for the trash can, but neither putting it to very good use. Joe Blade's giving Aaron Stone a chance to get back into the fight, though. Throws him down onto the floor, kicks to the chest to keep him down. Oh, I'm going to try once again. Special delivery for Joe Blade. One, two but unable to tie things up. Back into the ring, goes Stone. You see the ladder standing over there, a table, chair, stop sign, kendo stick, Stone to the top. Just as Blade begins to stir around. Oh my God, like a torpedo shot off the top. I think I saw Joe Blade's soul leave his body right there. But he's back to his feet, both men just rushing at each other. Blade strikes first with that thrust. Oh, and head first goes Stone into the steel post. Now the steel chair is going to be put to good use here by Joe Blade. Cracking it over the skull of the milkman falling into the pin. Ref. One, two. This ref has really got to be in better position, man, to call these pinfall attempts. He's dropping the ball. But, oh, throw now into that standing ladder. I want to talk about jagged edges, man. I can slice into your flesh so easily. That steel ladder, no joke. Again, charging at one another. They're just throwing soup bones at this point. With 11 minutes and five seconds remaining. Joe Blade currently with one point. Aaron Stone, no points. Counter now, Stone sent careening into that ladder. And you can see Blade just bleeding more and more as this match continues. Now it's covering his entire, his entire chest. Runs into that big boot. How Aaron Stone has enough power left at this point for the deadlift running power slam. I do not know. They're calling the protein back powerhouse for a reason, baby. Now he's got the chair right over the head of Joe Blade. Out cold and a pool of his own blood. But still, Aaron Stone cannot tie things up. What does he have to do, guys? This match might have, to, might have to be stopped with the amount of blood that Joe Blade is losing here. A DDT, third time, right into the pin. One, two. Good Lord have mercy. Joe Blade. Looking like he just came straight from a Right from the set of a, a Quentin Tarantino movie. The amount of blood he's losing here. Into the pin. To score another point, but Stone will not allow him to take an even further lead here.
Stone. Oh, the ladder gonna fall down on top of Aaron Stone. Not another one. Hammerlock, EDT on the floor. One, two, three guys. And that's now two points scored for Joe Blade. He's gonna try to make it three. How is Stone still conscious? Seatbelt suplex. This is really do or die time, guys. For Aaron Stone, he needs to score two points in a row to tie things up, and there you go! A tap, a tap! Joe Blade taps out, point scored for Aaron Stone. It is now two to one. Stone must score another point to tie things up. Rude bomb! Plenty of time, eight minutes and 25 seconds for Aaron Stone to attempt to tie things up here. It ain't over yet, it's far from over. Steel chair, trying to cave in the skull of Joe Blade, make sure he never stars in another movie again. Except for perhaps if he's the, the hideous villain. Great to the midsection, Blade. Sees his shot, sit out, power bomb. Stone, able to drop down behind him. Hurls him. Ribs first into the steel steps. Thinking about going for the kendo stick. And now pandering a bit to the CM Universe who are definitely rallying behind the Milkman. I don't know if this is the time to do so though. It is still two to one in favor of Joe Blade. Discus punch out. A considerable <laughs> break between this matchup and the next bout here tonight. Get the clean crew out here. We've got quite a job. Steel steps just dropped. On the lower back, guys, no steel steps. And that's gonna get another point for Joe Blade. It is now three to one. I was about to say those steel steps, no joke. Ain't no feather. Good 25 pounds plus just dropped onto the back of Aaron Stone there. And it is now three to one in this Iron Man match. Three points for Joe Blade. Only one point for Aaron Stone. But Aaron Stone, oh my God! Oh my God, special delivery on the ladder! One, two, what? He kicked out? Are you kidding me? Kicked out! <laughs> Up against the barricade. How Joe Blade doesn't have a broken back right now. Insanity that he kicked out of that. Look at this, the ref doesn't even want to be anywhere near this guy. Look at like a walking corpse. Look at the blood. This is genuinely a crime scene. Kick to the back. Guys, Joe Blade, all he has to do at this point if he wants to is just go on defense. Let the clock run it down. He is in the lead. Three to one. Aaron Stone has to score two falls in a row just for this to, to potentially end in a tie. Neither man really wants that. They wanted to prove who's the, the better man definitively. No shadow of a doubt here tonight. I'm sure Aaron Stone would rather take a tie than a loss, but it's not looking good. Now look at Aaron Stone, guys. He's not looking very much better than Joe Blade at this point. My God. By the strength and guidance of the nine. A bona fide blood bath to kick off Octane. Oh, watch out, ref. Wait. Aaron Stone, Falcon Arrow on the ladder. God damn. Broken in half. And now what's this? Spiked. Greetings. From New Jersey. Joe 
Oh, Blade is dead. D E A D. But Aaron Stone from the top. What was he considering doing there? Special delivery on the chair. One, two, three. Not kicking out of that one. And it is now three to two. Three minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock. And Aaron Stone has to score one more fall in order to tie things up for Joe Blade. He needs to prevent himself from getting pinned or submitted. He needs to run down the clock, go on the defensive, or try and score another fall, which is what he's gonna try to do here. Go for that hammerlock DDT again. Aaron Stone says, get that shit out of here. Throws him off to the side. Got that stop sign in the hand of an ops. Not to try and use it. Thriving off the energy of these CMB faithful. I don't know what else he could be running on. It ain't Duncan. Enough blood covering the ringside area to probably supply a small hospital. Ain't rid of the atomic drop. Not once, but twice. Three to two in favor of Joe Blade. It is impressive in and of itself that both these guys are still conscious. <laughs> Not to say anything else that we've witnessed here. Look at Blade! Oh, it pays for his arrogance! Decapitated! Back in the ring at last! Aaron Stone has had enough of Joe Blade. Trash can. Deflected by Joe Blade. Aaron Stone, another Falcon Arrow. One minute and 45 seconds. One minute, 40 seconds. That's how much time Aaron Stone has left to score a fall, for this to end in a tie. But Blade's not gonna let it happen! Set up power bomb! Right in the middle of the ring. One, two, denied! Denied! Blade goes for the trash can. Right over the head of the protein pack powerhouse. Tries to hoist him up. Not enough strength left. Desperate pin. One, two. But the desperation is not enough. Aaron, you can still do it. 45 seconds. There's still time. There's still a chance. Military press, power slam! Stone's not staying down. He's fighting to his feet. Hold himself up in the corner. Blocks the knife edge shot. Kick to the gut. DDT! No! Arm over the chest! Last chance! One, two, three! He did it! Aaron Stone did it! It is three to three, five, four, three, two, one, it's over! It ends in a draw! Both men on their feet! How can you not give them a round of applause? What a match, two warriors! But what's been settled? Nothing! It ends in a tie here tonight.
My goodness, lads and gents, we had to get a whole crew out here. Deep clean the ringside area and the ring itself after that astonishing Iron Man match we just witnessed. I cannot believe that Aaron Stone clutched like that. Biggest clutch in CMB history, I think. Wow, well, things are certainly not over between the two of them. But the show must go on. Yeah, we still have a, a lot to look forward to here tonight. That was just our opening bout. And coming up next, a non-title matchup as rising star champion Quinn Bell getting ready to take on Caroline Swift here. It was last episode of Octane, guys, that Quinn Bell managed to get herself a victory over Amber Young. But after the matchup, we saw both Caroline Swift and newcomer Amira Iden join Amber Young in beating down Quinn Bell. However, Caroline Swift has evidently had a change of heart saying a couple of days ago that she got caught up in the moment. You know, she's a newcomer here. She was persuaded by Amber Young to carry out that attack. Last episode of Octane, but Caroline Swift letting it be known that she's, she's remorseful for what she did. And thus giving Quinn Bell this opportunity for a bit of payback. Caroline Swift who asked for this matchup and it's only fair that after what I did last episode of Octane that Quinn Bell have this chance to to get Swift back I don't wonder how Amber Young feels about that now, obviously Amber Young and Amira Iden still on the same page we saw Young help out Iden in her debut match against RBW a couple days ago on Shockwave but Swift it would seem Wants nothing to do with this alliance. Amber Young is trying to build, but Quinn Bell, she ain't gonna pull any punches. <laughs> She's giving Caroline Swift a, a boot to the jaw. Yeah, maybe maybe Quinn Bell doesn't fully buy what Swift is saying. She ain't picking up what she's putting down, ain't buying what she's selling. Oh, there's a boot from Swift in response to the Rising Star Chip. It's still a great opportunity for Swift here. Potentially knock off the, the champion in this non-title bout. Great reversal by the Rebel Queen. Still to come here tonight on Octane. Episode 78. We'll see Aurelius, Andre Rogers, and Anarchy Champion Leon Valente battle this new tag team of Amare Rivers and Joseph Santos. See if those two can get on the same page. Certainly an unorthodox duo if I've ever seen one, but unorthodox duos in CMB history got a fairly good track record. Hey, Joseph Santos and Sarasi back in the day. Nobody thought they would turn out to be such a, a great tag team and Look at the success they have. So maybe Santos, maybe he can run it back. Strike gold once again alongside Amare Rivers. We'll have to wait and see. Only time will tell, as the old saying goes. But of course, we've also got our main event here tonight. First time ever in CNB history. Special guest referee matches. Morgan going to be donning the referee shirt. Call in the action, Hunter Quinn. Challenges Tracy James for the Rite of Passage Championship. Ruth has press. Big right hands from Quinn Bell. Set her up for a power bomb. Quinn Bell deceptively powerful. And as I've said so many times before, really knows how to put those long legs of hers to good use. Swift with a double underhook DDT to the Rising Star Champion. Gonna immediately pick her up. Putting her in a seated position off the ropes for a kick to the chest. Gonna turn Quinn Bell inside out. Now look at these knee strikes in the clinch. There's that MMA background coming into play. 
Going bell though. Never fully out of the fight. Well documented. She delivers some elbows to the left knee of Caroline Swift. And the dreaded foot DDT. Don't have to go that far, kid. Oh, the Death Valley bomb. She likes to follow it up with those cheeky slaps to the face. Quick hook to the leg now. Adding insult to injury, but it ain't gonna be enough to get in the win here. Obviously, we know the next episode of Shockwave is gonna be Precious Pratt taking on Arisa Masami with the winner going on to challenge Quinn Bell for her Rising Star Championship. Quinn Bell here, got Swift up on the top rope. What is she cooking up here? Whoa! The hops into a superplex! Holy shit! One, two, but it's not enough to keep Swift down. How about that vertical leap though? Quinn Bell. Grabbed her by the hair. Swift very desperately hoping for a, a chance to catch her breath. Rolls out out of the apron. Look at Quinn Bell, the veteran, keeping on her. Like white on rice. And taking her down to the outside with a sunset flip power bomb. Swift wanted this matchup, wanted to give Quinn Bell her, her opportunity at payback. Might be regretting that decision right about now, though. Quinn firmly in the driver's seat, taking her time here. Playing around a little bit with the rookie, maybe not the wisest decision. Quinn Bell wanting to keep her momentum at an all-time high heading into her championship defense against either Precious Pratt or Arisa Masami. Definitely seems like a target's been painted on her back by Amber Young. You'd be foolish to think it's not watching this matchup right now. Nice kick. Tries for another one to the gut. Now these two gonna stand and bang right in the middle of the ring. Neither one backing down. They're going for it. Looks like Quinn Bell starting to get the better of the newcomer. Takes it down with that good old fashioned big boot, but now in an instant, man. Pull him out, open palm strikes. Looks like maybe a Fujiwara. Caroline Swift has got Quinn Bell. Caught up in a Fujiwara armbar, not for long though. Expert escape by the Rising Star Champion. Now she goes full steam ahead. Pele kick. Ringing the bell of Caroline Swift. She's out of there. That was instinct. Well, I think unfortunately she's gonna find any sort of refuge at ringside as Quinn Bell keeps on her like peanut butter on jelly. You can run, but you can't hide. And now another Death Valley bomb, this time at ringside, and some more slaps to the face. Oh no, this will not end well for Caroline Swift. The botch plex on the floor. Night, night, Caroline Swift. Quinn Bell just gonna throw her back into the ring. She can take her time here. Whoa, going to the top. Oh, but she got a bit cocky. A bit overzealous. Should have just gone for the pin. Now she might end up paying for it. Swift goes to the corner. Forearm smash takes Quinn off her feet. Speaking of her feet, grab it out of the switch for that alley oop bomb. And we'll drag her closer to the center of the ring. Nothing. 
Good coming Quinn Bell's way. Irish Whip gonna throw it down to the outside. I don't think that's what Swift was intending though. Now we see Swift gonna start to pick apart the left knee of the Rising Star Champion. Quinn Bell able to fight back with that punch to the midsection. I think now Quinn not gonna make the same mistake again of underestimating Swift here. Pulls her up into a back suplex. Hook of the leg for the win. One, two. But it's a two count only for the Rebel Queen. She's getting frustrated now. But she can't seem to put Caroline Swift away. Another box flex might do it. But Swift able to block it out into a guillotine choke. Takes Quinn Bell down. She's trapped. Guillotine in real deep. Wow, I thought she tapped. But Quinn Bell able to somehow keep her head above the water. Swift gonna go for the pin. One, two. I was hoping that she might have choked the life out of Quinn Bell there. Enough to get her the three count, but looking on the side of Caroline Swift here. Quinn, now she's the one looking quite worse for wear. Big forearm. Swift. Wants her out of that corner. Swift maybe about one of those submission holds. Quinn Bell wants nothing to do with it. And for a botch quest, a second time. One, two. Whoa. Quinn Bell looks back. Mouth wide open. Shocked to say at least what a kick out by Caroline Swift. Really showing her grit in this matchup. That's nice reversal of the Swift though. Swift in a back whip right over her head. Running elbow across the chest. Swift is feeling it here. Whatever she's got left, man. This is her opportunity. Brainbuster, maybe. Quinn able to get behind her though. Quinn a bit more cautious. Playing it perhaps a bit more safe. Gets dropped on her head. But both women are down. Swift. She knows that she can't afford to lay around right now. She's gonna go up to Brett's rope. Elbow. And Swift, might this be her last chance? She's gonna go for the guillotine again. If she can take Quinn off her feet, and she does. The guillotine is locked in. Quinn Bell's, wait, Quinn escapes. Are you kidding me? Slam Swift on her back. What a matchup this has turned out to be. I'll tell you, I was not expecting this to be such a phenomenal matchup here between these two. Not that I was thinking it was going to be bad by any means, but my lord. These two beating the hell out of each other. This is a real breakout performance for Caroline Swift. I'll tell you that much. Been breaking there. It might have been Caroline Swift's jaw after that knee from the Rising Star Champion. Whew. Golly. Just before the count of six, Quinn Bell take this fight back into the ring. Gets Caroline Swift onto her back. She's going up to the top. Might she look for that elbow drop again? No, the leg drop with style. Midair solo, the Swift. She ain't impressed. Dragon screw right into the arm bar. Trying to rip that left arm of Quinn Bell right off. Rapid kicks to the face and followed up Swift to hold her own like this. More than hold her own. Against a former world champion. 
veteran in every sense of the word, like Quinn Bell. Try there in the corner. DDT! Lucha style! And then follows it up with a straight stop to the face. Nothing overly impressive about that, but definitely effective. And Swift goes for the pin, but again, only a two count. Frustration continuing to build and build for both women at this point, man. They have both taken their biggest, best shots. Nothing has been enough to get the job done. Another stop to the face as Swift going to go up to the top. Elbow drop right to the very heart of the Rebel Queen. Kick to the gut, going to try for that brain buster again. Got to be it. One, two, three. Caroline Swift has done it. One, eight, two. It's Amber Young taking out both Swift and Quinn Bell. Well, I guess Amber Young making it clear if you're not with me, then you're just in my way. What a win for Swift, but the moment ruined by Amber Young. Well, nonetheless, that was a big win for Caroline Swift, but it could be a big night for the Unholy Alliance. That's for damn sure, because, of course, in our main event, Hunter Quinn set to challenge Tracy James for the Rite of Passage Championship with Morgan as the special guest referee. But first, it's going to be Jeremy Barmore of the Unholy Alliance here. Once again, borrowing Hunter Quinn's baton there, beating stick. As he'll be taking on B-Man of Amity. Gonna have bloody justice in his corner, it looks like. Now, Amity, that's a tough situation. The last couple of weeks, with the Ted involved, trust has been hard to come by for the members of Amity. And we kind of saw things come to a head that meeting earlier this week. Tracy James attempting to keep the peace. Even going so far as to say that he doesn't know if he fully trusts Ted. But the rest of Amity... They're making it very clear. They do not trust Ted in any way, shape, or form. Even though, as we've seen the past few weeks, it looks like, for all intents and purposes, Ted is just genuinely trying to help Amity in this fight against the Unholy Alliance. But specifically, Toyota Camry says, we don't want your help. We don't need your help. And even accused Tracy James of trying to replace JT Moss. James saying that's not true. You know, Moss is injured right now. We're waiting for him to come back, but I'm not trying to replace him with the Ted. That's not what this is about, but Camry not fully buying it. You can see nobody's out here in the corner of B-Man. Trust indeed. In the name of the game. Where's John Litnick when you need him? And of course, Tracy James busy in the main event, but where's Toyota Camry? What about Amelia Jones, Precious Pratt? Nobody can be in the corner of B-Man here. Watch his back, especially with Bloody Justice lurking about at ringside. Here we go, Jeremy Barmore, B-Man, and certainly an age-old clash of pure power and aggression and speed and agility and well, Jeremy Barmore winning out the star here the dark horse gonna launch B-Ban into the corner back elbow delivered 
No doubt that Ted has been a consistent thorn in the side of the Unholy Alliance. We saw him knock off Bloody Justice last episode of Octane with a bit of help from Tracy James. saying if not for the Ted and his constant interfering the last few weeks that Amity would already be history. Unholy Alliance looking for a total takeover of Octane. That is all Barmore here at the start of this matchup. Look at that. Refusal to let B-Man go anywhere anytime soon. Clipping the wings of the former Octane Tag Team Champion right into the pin. Whoa, not even a one count. Of course, it was Jeremy Barmore back at Climb to Fame who attempted to take the Rite of Passage Championship from Tracy James, but failed to do so. Some more elbows delivered to the chest, followed up by some stomps. This is just a one-sided shellacking here. My lord, bro. Not a stop offense from Jeremy Barmore. Finally, a side of life. Beating him with that to the side of the head and runs right into a super kick there. Next, that tag team matchup is we're going to see Aurelius, Andre Rogers, and Leon Valente take on Amare Rivers and Joseph Santos. We've also still got Celestia in action, guys. One on one with Samantha Mosset. Of course, our main event, Hunter Quinn challenging Tracy James for the Rite of Passage Championship. Morgan going to be calling the action in that matchup. Hunter Quinn probably in his locker room right now watching. In fact, he let out a tweet says, destroy him, my dark horse. Unholy Lines have already cost B-Man multiple weeks of action here in the new season. Of course, he missed being in the Octane Tag Team Championship match at Climb to Fame. Had to be replaced by the Ted. And even in the end, it still didn't matter. As obviously, the Unholy Alliance leaving Climb to Fame with the goal. But will they leave with even more gold here tonight? Great reversal by B-Man into a DDT. Oh, did something big like that. Stop to the shoulder. Off the top rope he goes. A little bit of a miscalculation though. And unfortunately, that's going to be good news for Jeremy Barmore. What injustice. Watching from Barmore's corner so far has not really gotten involved, but don't count him out. But a spare, spare an eye. Knee to the back of the head and down onto the floor. That just knocked Jeremy Barmore for a loop, but he snaps back to reality rather quickly. Goes for a spear, lead frogs him, does B Man. How about those reflexes? Count of seven, B Man. Gonna get the Dark Horse back into the ring. Oh, there's Bunny Justice. What's he up to? Pulled out a sledgehammer. Throwing it into the ring as B-Man looks to set up far more. The Stinger has been unsheathed. One, two, on a two count only. B-Man, oh, I thought he was going to go for that sledgehammer for a second, but the referee luckily got to it first. Going to get rid of it as B-Man goes off the top. Ford just close on to take Barmore down. To the top again. Moonsault! Barmore was dominating the opening minutes of this matchup, but I'll tell you what. Great comeback effort by B-Man. As he once again unsheathes the Stinger. Hooks the leg, Bloody Justice can't even watch. He doesn't want to see it. Another kick out by Barmore. Barmore's already always been a tough SOB to keep down. Oh my God, man, the stinger twice. Head Buster. Okay, B-Man. And a little bit of homage to Ted. Not gonna try to go to the ropes, but Jeremy Palmer stops him. Power slam 
right in front of Bloody Justice, who looks to be toying with the top turnbuckle there. Ripping off the protective pad, exposing the steel. The referee has not noticed Barmore kind of blocking his view. He's waiting for B-Man to get back to his feet. And of course, B-Man not going to back down. Scoop slam though, reversed into a DDT by the Dark Horse. Some more of those stops. Oh my God. Cave. B-Man's chest in if he has to. I'm not too sure what was going on there, why the ref didn't count the pin. Oh, this? oh no. Camel clutch, but a lucky rope break. Looks like B-Man had one foot on the rope. Good catch by the ref there, but Barmore's not done. World's strongest slam. Takes a lot out of Barmore, but he's still able to throw his arm over the chest. I think the ref is busy fixing the turnbuckle that Bloody Justice was playing with before. Bloody Justice may have just inadvertently cost Barmore this match. Man, is in real bad shape right about now, though. I don't know how much longer he lasts. Barmore, he don't give a damn. Bloody Justice gonna stop B-Man from toying around at ringside. Oh, no hope for a rope break this time. Right in the middle of the ring. The camel clutch is applied. B-Man's trapped, but refuses to tap. The way that Barber manhandles him. I don't appreciate Barmore's change of attitude aligning himself with the Unholy Alliance, but man, I love to watch it work. Runs into the super kick! B-Man, standing shooting star press. Last chance to put Barmore down here, perhaps he kicks out. Another moonsault, just absolutely Talking anything, everything at Jeremy Barmore here to try and keep him down for the three count. Jason James in his locker room right now, preparing for the main event, preparing to defend the right of passage championship against Hunter Quinn. Hunter Quinn in his locker room right now, watching who's going to get the momentum passed off to them in the main event. B-Man with a little bit of a, a shout out to JT Moss now, that inverted figure four. Barmore does not tap, but the Stinger! A third time! One, two, three, and that's gonna be a win for B-Man! What an effort, what a fight! B-Man delivered here tonight! Jeremy Barmore gave B-Man the beating of a lifetime, but it did not keep B-Man down. This was this was a real, real needed win for Amity. And this is good for Tracy James. Will he be able to follow up on this momentum earned by B-Man in our main event when he defends the right of passage championship against Hunter Quinn? Tertiary made it Whoa, 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 whoa! What the hell? Aurelius are in the ring. Andre Rogers and Leon Valente ready to go here, guys, but Desolation has just ambushed 
Amare Rivers and Joseph Santos as they were making their way down the ramp. The ref is, is, is checking on them, making sure that they're in good enough condition to actually go through with this matchup. Looks like both of them are saying, ring the damn bell. So this matchup is going to continue as scheduled, but certainly at a, a disadvantage if they weren't already. Our Amare Rivers and Joseph Santos here against Aurelius Bludgeon and Trauma. I guess we're going to send a message to the other seven teams involved in the Tag Team Cup tomorrow night in Tokyo, Japan. At the expense of Rivers and Santos here. Santos, last thing he needed. You know, I talked to him earlier tonight. He told me he hasn't gotten a wink of sleep this entire past week, thanks to Amar Ray Rivers. If you, if you didn't see Amar Ray Rivers accidentally or perhaps purposefully, we don't really know, leaked Santos's number, his personal cell phone number, on Instagram Live, and Santos has been dealing with constant text messages and phone calls all week long. So not only is he sleep deprived, exhausted, but now catching that beat down by desolation before this match begins. Definitely a further advantage for Andre Rogers and Anarchy Champion Leon Valente. You see Rogers on top of Santos delivering some punches across the forehead. Talked about it earlier tonight. Santos has made unorthodox tag teams work in the past. He and Sarasi, when they first started out, they were far from friends, but ended up becoming one of the biggest fan favorite tag teams in CMB history. Tag team champions together. Looking to potentially have lightning strike twice with Amar Ray Rivers here, but I don't know. Open the eye there by Valente. Of course, still undefeated for almost a year. Greatest undefeated streak in CMB history. Not even in tag team competition has Valente been defeated. I don't know if it's going to end here tonight. Thanks to Desolation. Well, Santos going to take his shot. Imagine if that was enough to do it right there. That'd be something. Santos going to make a tag to Amare Rivers. Of course, finding himself a little bit lost emotionally without Isabella Almas, who's currently injured. No date on when exactly she'll be back either. Mar Ray Rivers along with the, the doctors here in CMB saying it could be up to a, a full year. Hopefully not. Mar Ray, looking, as he said himself, make his lover proud, earn championship gold, and preoccupy himself. Drop! Face first on the top turnbuckle. All right, stopping the absolute hell out of a like here. <laughs> Slick shot, leg drop to the back of the head. Now one person who's going to be watching tonight's main event very closely is Chris Diamond, the leader of Aurelius. Especially with global champion Morgan calling the action. Florida Flatliner! Rogers oh, just walked right into it. One, two, they see his undefeated streak flash before his eyes right there. Kick in the back of the head by the rat in the hat. Santos coming to life now. Probably got himself some moon juice before coming out here. Quick pen attempt by Rogers. One count only. Tries to assert the kick of Santos. Action rolls out of the way now. Drags the Golden Boy into the corner. Tag made to Omar Ray Rivers. Lose to Sen Santos. Like a torpedo. Right into Andre Rogers Valente. Hot shotting. Rivers response by knocking him off the apron. And then a corkscrew. Uh, look at that. Rogers isn't even gonna move. <laughs> Rivers just missed, but acting like he did something. Classic Andre Rogers. The ego on this kid. Oh. 
Our tertiary main event here on Octane. Number 78, my friends. Coming up next, Celestia. Going to be getting Samantha the most set one on one. And of course, our main event, first time ever. Stretch and drop by Rivers here, right in front of Diabolente. He's got to be careful not to get involved, though. Risk for disqualification. Going to reset the count. Our Rivers seems real locked in on Valente here. Get him some of the Anarchy Champion. Looks like Andre Rogers might be trying to creep up on Santos. They'll run right by him, they'll get back into the ring. High kick. Both Andre Rogers and Leon Valente proven deadly submission experts. Andre Rogers with that bro mission of his. Valente, of course, with the triangle choke. Tapped out countless competitors that have stood across that ring from Valente. So got him in a Fujiwara armbar right now. I said it before, I'll say it again. Great many things that you can say about Chris Diamond. But he sure does know how to pick him, man. His two protégés, I'll tell you right now, both Andre Rogers and Leon Valente, future world champion. Mark my words right here. Rivers has been busted open and a little bit of an assist. And Valente gonna hurl Rogers off the top right into Amare Rivers. Forearm to the face. Nothing but disrespect. Trying to end this matchup, but still only a two count. Tag is good. Tag indeed to Leon Valente. Appreciate the fight that Amar Rivers and Joseph Santos are delivering here. That pretty match ambush by Desolation. Side of the head. Rivers needs to make a tag real bad right about now. He's bleeding too. Gut check, double knees. Cracking every single rip. There's the tag. In comes Joseph Santos. Does he have much more left though to put the team on his back? Kick the lower back, Santos. Hyping himself up, hyping these fans and attendance up. But Valente catches him midair into the triangle choke, but Rivers is right there to make the save. Watching his partner's back. Andre Rogers is going to run interference. Valente got to stay focused on the legal man. That would be Joseph Santos who rolls to the outside. Valente. Coming to help out Andre Rogers, though. I <laughs> think of the chase. Rivers away. Here comes Santos out of nowhere, blindsiding Valente. Back into the ring, referee to count of four here. Santos can use the opportunity. Drop kick sends Rogers. Off the apron, Valente, wrong time to turn your back on the rat in the hat. Wing shot splashed to the back, but Valente now has the leg of Santos, spins him around. A meaty clothesline. Back in the ring, he sends him. Santos struggling to get to his feet, but get to his feet, he does. Throws out that Hail Mary. Elbow across the chest, hoping, praying it's enough, but prayers unanswered. Look at these ferocious punches. Gonna bust Valente open. Maybe trying for the Tres Amigos. Valente. Oh, <laughs> Nelson slam. Got Santos exactly where he wants him. Gonna delve in. Start picking him apart. Piece by piece. 
Santos gets trapped in that triangle choke again. He ain't gonna last very long. The way that Valente is ripping him apart here. And they get tagged to Andre Rogers as Santos gets to his feet, but gets a net. Leg drop Bulldog, not going anywhere. A golden boy, can't help himself with the show off a little bit. But to mock. Mar Ray River should do nothing but watch as Andre Rogers applies the modified cross face. The let game short, Rivers doesn't try to Make the save, Santos doesn't tap, but I don't think Rogers is finished. The first 48, one, two, three. Digs down deep. Joseph Santos, maybe the closest call I've seen in a long time, 2.999999. Look at the swag walk. But the tag's been made. Big mistake. Andre makes the tag. Bodies flying every which way. Oh no, River's running right into the clutches. Oh, Valente. The rear naked. Got graced by the wrestling gods with that rope break. He is far from out of trouble, though. Trying to lock in that triangle choke. Lamar Rivers telling him to stay the hell away from my legs. Half catch from Gross Estio. Cheap right hook to Rogers. Going to give him the taste of the hardest part of the ring. Back suplex on the apron and a forearm from Valente. Lamar Rivers popping off right now. Take the time to show off the 18 inch pythons, brother. We all got tickets to the gun show here tonight. Rogers throwing it into the ring. He is not the legal man for Aurelius. Leon Valente is. He's gonna get spun around. Vintage. Amare Rivers with the stretch. And drop. We're at a count of eight here, by the way. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. Wait a minute. 10. Joseph Santos, Amare Rivers, they've won. And that's, that's officially the first loss ever for Leo Valente. I mean, by count out. But still, that is, that is a loss. The first blemish on the record of Leon Valente, a very hesitant hug. Oh, oh it looks like Amar Rivers perhaps a bit too rough for, for Santos. Okay, well, uh-oh, it's, it's devolving very fast here between these two. They got caught up in the moment. The Santos trying to, trying to, oh, no. I don't know about these two. Santos, oh, come on. Hand to the face. Can these two properly on the same page? They should be celebrating. What a win here by count out or not. Whoa, Rivers. A little bit of help from Tailcoat Val there, perhaps?
I still cannot believe that, guys. The first official loss. Count out or not, that is a loss for Leon Valente. Technically, the undefeated streak is no more. He's still unpinned and unsubmitted. That's still obviously incredibly impressive, but let's not gloss over that that fast. And now it's COVID event time. Before we get to our main event, history-making main event, first ever special guest referee match in CME history, Celestia. Getting ready to take on Samantha Moset here. I'm taking the pictures. That was me. I forgot to turn my uh, flash off, my, my shutter. I forgot to mute my phone. I apologize. Let's not talk about it any further. Celestia, obviously, guys, has been uber impressive since arriving here in CME. She put herself on the map straight out the gate when she attacked Samantha Moset and Ted and Torres after their matchup a couple weeks ago and then defeated Torres in her in-ring debut on Shockwave. Now looking to follow it up with a win over Miss Moset. Moset when she's not busy pushing that book of hers onto anyone and everyone she comes into contact with. Pulling out the brass knucks like we saw her do in the last episode of The Underground. Clocking Tori Doyle in the jaw, getting herself disqualified. Hopefully doesn't plan on doing it again here tonight. The ref should check her. I'm sure she probably has a couple of copies of her book on her person at any given time, but hopefully not the brass knuckles. But here we go, Celestia, Samantha Moset one-on-one -on -one in our COVID event. I certainly love an individual who can take initiative, man, who doesn't wait around to be given opportunities. Takes the bull by the horns, if you will. That's certainly what Celestia has done since debuting here in CMB a couple of weeks ago. Aggressive streak. It's been exhibited by Celestia. Didn't just beat Ted and Torres, man. Beat her in a matter of minutes. And brutally, too. Ooh, child getting caught with a dragon screw. That's the most set. Looks can be deceiving. And she has showcased herself to be a quite dangerous submission specialist. You see the way that she's going after Celestia's arm here. Hicking at it. What if the brass knuckles are hidden in the book? You know how people like to hollow out books. They can hide money in there and what have you. Perhaps that's what Moset has done. Every, every edition, every copy of her book comes with a pair of brass knuckles. Look at Celestia with the bridging Fujiwara middle of the ring. Kept that locked in much longer, but... Snapped Moset's arm like a twig. Eyeing her up in the Windsor. Now here's something we haven't seen in quite a long time. Somebody tell Krizzy to shield his eyes. He doesn't want to see this one. A kick up the bum. And now to the top, Celestia. Fixing the fly. This doesn't end well for Moset. Big drop kick. Might that do her in just that easy? One. Two count. Celestia gonna watch as Moset drops to the outside, thinking she might be safe out there. Celestia saying, think again. Suicide down for Moset with a sidestep. Man, Celestia eating shit right there. Pardon my French. Slam Celestia face first off the apron. Celestia. Coming at it with a barrage of kicks, one after the other. Lighting up the chest of Moset like the 4th of July. Honestly, I can't tell you what Moset's book is about. She, she's given me about 10, 15 copies at this point. I've just been giving them to family members. You know, I'm not a big reader though to begin with. Never been a huge reader reader I hardly know her <laughs> you know what I mean Moset with a nice Pele kick to the arm of Celestia throws her face first into the ring post things were looking promising for Celestia 
early on, but not so much right now, the way that Musset's been targeting that arm. He blows her a kiss, being a bit cheeky, maybe too cheeky. Some kicks of her own, Celestia gonna shut that down. Look to the jaw, spins her around, whatever she was trying for though, an elbow waiting for her. A couple of elbows to the gut. Celestia gonna try for that bridge in Fujiwara again. Once more, can she get it up? She does. Samantha Moset yet again. Very deep waters right there, but Celestius decides to give up the hold. They'll find themselves at ringside. The Kimura by Samantha Moset. Celestia though, finding her way out of it. And that ringside, anyhow, even if she tapped, it wouldn't have mattered. But, well, if her arm broke in half, then it would have mattered. What a, what a bit. Nasty knee to the side of the head. The kind of knee that can put you to sleep. Real quick, lucky for Celestia. Still conscious. Seems like this has become a a bid by both women, a bit, bit of a race to uh, see who can snap the other's arm first. Vintage Borton combo, no, Moset stops it. Into the dragon screw. Moset just starting out herself here in CMV, not looking to be a stepping stone for Celestia. Gonna grab a hold of that leg, she's been working on throughout the matchup. I don't know about that being Right, bit of a shoddy call by our referee. Oh, now she got her in an arm bar. But Celestia escaping a matter of a couple of seconds. Knew how to get out of that one. Well versed is Celestia. As now she just throws Moset out of the ring. Getting rid of the garbage. Off the road she goes. Baseball slide, draw kick, double boots right into the mush of Samantha Moset. Now Celestia. Nothing technical about something like that. <laughs> Just kind of a, a douche move. Thrown back into the ring now. Celestia doesn't appear to be in any sort of rush. Very calmly, very gingerly getting back into the ring as she takes a second to set up the stomp. And that'll put Moset to sleep. I don't think there's any waking up from that. One, two. Celestia, a little bit of a tantrum after understandably a pretty shocking kick out there by Moset. Stopped her through the canvas. Moset just shakes it off. Oh, the annoying as Samantha Moset has been since joining the women's division here in CMV. And that bell rings, man. No laughing matter. Look at this. Willing to get her hands dirty as well. Unsheathing that top turnbuckle, exposing the steel that lies beneath. Got that Kimura locked in again. Celestia, she cannot allow Moset to keep this locked in. A couple of seconds more. She would have had to tap. Would have heard that snap, crackle and pop. Big kick by Celestia, but the referee is too busy fixing the top turnbuckle. So Matt the Moset just saved her own skin there. I don't know if that was planned or not, but. Celestia. Oh, section. Moset sees her opening. Snap. Cattle mutilation! Cattle mutilation! Celestia's got no hope for a rope break. No hope for a chance to get out of that. But Moset gonna release the hole. Looks like she wants her to try to lock in the Kimura again. That may have been her mistake. These two, though. 
behind their budging as they just go back and forth, shot for shot. But this ain't no bar. That's the CMU wrestling ring. So that's the uh, a heavy hit of it. Oh, someone kicked the gut. I think that might have cracked a rib. Going after the legs. Celestia. Came in! Double boots to the face! She came your goddamn skull in! That's what she came in! My lord! Another vicious display by Celestia! But not done! Celestia's not done! The win wasn't enough! A post-match beatdown, just the cherry on top here. And as we get ready for our main event, guys, might be a few minutes. I have to unfortunately run and do something real quick I forgot about. Let's hear a word from our sponsor. We don't actually have one. Go to W.GG and read the uh, FAQ if you want, but we'll be, we'll be back soon.
right, my friends, we are back. Sorry about that momentary interruption in the show, but it is time for our main event of the evening, and baby, it's a doozy. First time ever in CMV history, a special guest referee match. The CMV Global Champion going to be donning the referee shirt here tonight to call the action. Or I guess he's not going to be donning the referee shirt. He's supposed to be donning the referee shirt. But maybe he said to hell with that. I'm pretty sure he was given a referee shirt. He's supposed to be wearing a referee shirt. But I guess Morgan... As we all know, he does what he wants. <laughs> How are we supposed to know he's the referee if he's not wearing the damn shirt, man? Come on now, Morgan. But indeed, Morgan here tonight, not a competitor. He is going to be calling the action, and he says he's going to call the action straight down the middle says he doesn't care one way or the other who leaves this matchup with the Rite of Passage Championship, whether it's Hunter Quinn or whether it's Tracy James, because he says, no matter what, whichever one of them comes at him with that Rite of Passage Championship, the result will be the same. Them put into the dirt and him still global champion. And it is, of course, with that Rite of Passage Championship. Its holder can cash in anytime, anywhere for a shot at the CMB Global Championship. And Hunter Quinn of the Unholy Alliance. Not coming out here alone as Bloody Justice to be in his corner just as Bloody Justice was in the corner of Jeremy Barmore earlier tonight as he took that loss to B-Man. So obviously momentum not on the side of the Unholy Alliance here. And as I said earlier tonight, I'll reiterate Hunter Quinn said himself, if not for the constant interferences of the Ted, Sticking his nose in their business over the last few weeks. Amity would be long gone by now. Hunter Quinn also said he won't rest until every single member of Amity sharing a hospital room with each other. Tracy James ain't coming out here alone either, though. The Rite of Passage champion with Toyota Camry backing him up. Morgan's going to have his hands full here. Now, I hope he spent this past week really training how to properly officiate a matchup. He says he's going to call it down the middle. He's got bloody justice to worry about, Toyota Camry to worry about, not to mention Hunter Quinn and Tracy James in the ring. This ain't going to be no easy task for Morgan to uh, maintain order in this matchup. Obviously, things right now not going swimmingly for Amity. A lot of trust issues within Amity. Nobody seems to trust the Ted. Even Tracy James saying he doesn't fully trust Ted. And even Toyota Camry seems to be a bit distrustful of Tracy James, accusing him of trying to replace JT Moss with the Ted. But seemingly united, as they must be, for our main event, and that's what it's all about. The Rite of Passage Championship that Tracy James nearly bled to death defending against Jeremy Barmore back at Climb to Fame. The championship Tracy James has successfully cashed in in the past to win the Global Championship. Again, this is Morgan, despite not being an official referee gear. That goes against rules and regulations. But again, I don't think Morgan really gives a shit. Who's going to go in there and tell him to put the shirt on? Let's be honest. It's not going to be me. Let's find out how Morgan fares as ref. Maybe he'll have himself a career when 
Well, all is said and done in the ring as a competitor if he does uh, he does a good job here tonight. Just telling Tracy James, give me that championship. That championship that one of these men very well may cash in on Morgan in the near future. And it's not the first time we've seen Morgan hold up the Rite of Passage championship. He's also a former Rite of Passage champion. He cashed in to win the Global Championship the first time he held it. But here we go. Referee Morgan rings the bell. And again with Bloody Justice and Toyota Camry at ringside. See just how Morgan holds his own. Tracy take Hunter Quinn over to the ropes and spikes him. Another couple of seconds into this matchup. Hunter Quinn already getting his neck all jacked up, but to the back of the knee. Hobbling Hunter Quinn. Gonna throw a knee back at Tracy James, able to avoid that double axe handle. As I touched on earlier, you can be damn sure. And there's probably a whole lot of people in the back watching this matchup. Been the buzz of the CM Universe all week long, but specifically Chris Diamond said as much that he'd be watching this matchup. You know, he wants that one-on-one -on -one match with Morgan for the CMB Global Championship, which any person in their right mind, any sane person, any normal person would say it's what he deserves. What he's deserved for months and months and months at this point, ever since being screwed way back in Ascendance 11. Well, there's a fair count by Morgan right there. Clean two count for Tracy James. Yes, Morgan says he's going to call this right down the middle. He doesn't favor one guy or the other. Another very fair count. Morgan even went so far as to say he finds Tracy James interesting, if anything. Finds his whole group of pals interesting. If Morgan said that he found me interesting, I would be terrified. Big boot right there by Hunter Quinn. Hunter Quinn over the... Whoa! Takes out Toyota Camry, too, with that suicide dive. That was the strike right there. For the hell house. Bloodthirsty fans here in attendance. They want to see some broken fingers. Well, Hunter Quinn having himself a snack. He's going to bite off Tracy's finger. To get broken. How about non existent? Of course, guys, tomorrow night we return to the land of the rising sun. I am so excited. The Tag Team Cup is back. We are in Tokyo, Japan, and it's 24 hours, eight teams. Oh, wait, Bloody Justice, hey! Putting his hands on, on Tracy there. I wouldn't say he attacked him, but that should have at least been a warning. As Bloody Justice throws in a steel chair. Morgan, though, going to count the pin. And again, a very good count by the global champion, our official. Morgan going to find the steel chair and get rid of it before it can potentially be utilized. Hunter Quinn, former undisputed world heavyweight champion, and he knows that holding that right of passage championship leads to the global championship, leads to more power for the unholy alliance. Here on Octane, Tracy James, backslide driver, going to stack Hunter up middle of the ring. Morgan in position, one, two, but only a two count. Very, very close call right there for Hunter Quinn. And the whole alliance have already taken the Octane Tag Team titles from Amity. With a right of passage championship, he coming home with them too. Beautiful leg drop, Bloody Justice. Attempting to distract Morgan, doesn't work though. He's gonna count the pin, two count only. Turnbuckle has been exposed. Not too sure if Morgan has caught it just yet. Toyota Camry looking not exactly overly confident with Tracy James at the moment. Looking worried and understandably so. Dr. Quinn going to get thrown off the ropes. Big punch! 
turnbuckle is exposed. Morgan has still not noticed, or if he has, he's not trying to fix it. Leg jump to the top all the way to the outside now. That probably hurt Tracy James just as much as it did Hunter Quinn, man. That's long-term damage to the uh, tailbone of Tracy. Off those knees, Hunter Quinn's busted open. It has indeed been a bloody night here on Octane number 78. Look at our opening matchup. Count of six here. Of course, they have until Twink to get back into the ring. Morgan, I'd say. Fair count, not going fast. He's also not taking it easy on these two. And champion's advantage does apply here. Tracy James can retain by count out or disqualification. Oh, looks like Morgan has finally realized the turnbuckle is exposed just as Tracy James is going up to the top rope. Another leg drop? No. I guess two is enough for him. Cross body into the pin. Morgan, turn around. One, two. Oh, so close. Close ain't good enough, and Tracy James knows it. Stalking Hunter Quinn, looking for the backslide driver a second time to retain. One, two, kick out. The fans chanting one more time. They are rallying behind Amity, behind Tracy James. Big time splash off the ropes, doing all he can to keep the hurting on Hunter Quinn. Going to the top. The leg drop, no, one time too many. Hunter Quinn gets out of the way as Bloody Justice has again unsheathed the turnbuckle. Kick to the midsection. Hunter Quinn grabbing a hold of the arm, kick upside the head. Dangerous just Quinn all the ways that he can beat you. The beast bite, the fairy tale ending, the psycho driller. Down to the gut is both Bloody Justice and Toyota Camry. Watch on from ringside. Tracy up to the top rope. He's standing on top of the exposed turnbuckle. Another cross body into the pin right in front of Bloody Justice. One, two, another kick out. I'll tell you what, Morgan is staying true to his word. Whoa, 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 whoa! What the hell? Tracy! Tracy has just attacked Morgan! What? And now I'm gonna use the exposed turnbuckle! Sends Hunter Quinn stirred him first! Into the exposed turnbuckle! Tracy, what the hell? What has gotten into Tracy James? Morgan has stayed true to his word. He's called this match down the middle. No shenanigans. Why would he attack Morgan like that? Morgan is completely out of it. Guys, he might, he might call for the bell when he gets back up. I think he's going to. No, no, he's not. He's going to count the pin. I thought for a second he, he might decide to disqualify Tracy James. He would be well within his rights to do so. But Morgan not going to let Tracy get off that easy. The match going to continue. At least seemingly big boot right between the eyes. Morgan, turn around. Morgan. Oh, come on. Hunter Quinn had it won. Oh, how does Morgan call it down the middle now, though, after Tracy James just blatantly attacked him like that? If I were Morgan, I wouldn't be able to. I just cannot even begin to understand why Tracy James would do that. Even if he wanted to use the exposed turnbuckle, there were better ways to do it than attacking the ref. Yeah. That was just foolish. I don't know. Kicks to the face by Hunter Quinn now. Morgan telling both men get back into the ring. He doesn't want to count him out, but he will. Back into the ring is the right of passing champion. Look at that flexing right in front of Morgan, but that's going to allow Hunter Quinn to nail the Tiger Driver. One, two. Well, that was, 
That was still a fair count. Oh, but no. Hunter Quinn. I think he was, I think he was thinking about trying to lock in the beast bite. Look at this now. Hunter Quinn bleeding. Both men on their feet. Back and forth. For the Rite of Passage Championship. Another man backing down. Headbutt! 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 Hunter Quinn looking to seize the moment. Beast fight incoming. James, though. Wait! Bloody justice! Bloody justice! Causing the distraction. Hunter Quinn. Wait, but there's Toyota Camry! Toyota Camry distracting Hunter Quinn! Morgan just looking around like, what the hell is going on? Tracy! Tracy! Jaeger Bomb! With his own move! One, two! What? Unbelievable! James, over the top, sky high, flattens. Hunter Quinn quickly picks him back up, but Quinn able to reverse, four on the side of the head, back into the ring, he sends Tracy James, he has to pin him, he has to submit him in order to leave. Put the right of passage championship, elbow to the jaw, off the ropes, beautiful disaster, quick by the hellhound, and now he's finally got him, beast bite. Beast Bite locked in! New champ! New champ! Morgan calls for the bell! And we have a new Rite of Passage champion! And Morgan looks happy to award Hunter Quinn with the championship. Why wouldn't he? Tracy James blatantly, for no reason, attacking Morgan during the match when Morgan was calling the match straight down the middle, as fair as possible. Tracy James dug his own grave here tonight. And Hunter Quinn benefited big time.